Here's part two of our conversation with one of my favorite drummers, Pick Withers, formerly of Dire Straits. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. He was on four of Dire Straits' best albums, the self-titled debut, Communique, Making Movies, and Love Over Gold. Play with Jerry Rafferty, Bob Dylan. Now keep in mind, he has a great concert coming up on the weekend. It's Saturday, March 6th, 8 p.m. British time from the Hope Street Theater in Liverpool. Tickets are online at Pick Withers' official Facebook page. We'll have links, keep in mind, in the description of this video, and they're only 10 pounds. In this clip, the first one in a series, he talks about why he left the band. What was your reaction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing? Because only there was only three guys up there. There was no major introduction. There was uh, no performance. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I have to be careful what I say, you know. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm honored to, you know, to, to be part of it. But I don't buy into that kind of the circus aspect of it. I just don't, don't buy into it. And I, I just particularly want to, 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 you know, make nicey-nicey with everybody, and maybe apart from Alan and Hal, you know, who don't have so much history with it, you know, and, and I feel feel much more akin to them than than anybody else in the band, you know. Mm -hmm. Just uh, So I didn't really want to go, you know. I just, I just felt it was just, you know, trying to be, pretend that everything's wonderful just for the sake of getting an award, you know. It's... I, I'm... I, you get a box i give it away i give the hat away and the t-shirt away and the mug away you know and we keep maybe keep one and i give it to people who really think it's something special well speaking of that i'm just kind of curious let's just say you're in a dentist's office and someone turns around and says so what do you do like how do, how do you approach when someone asks you I mean, you know, as a drummer, you've done, you've done, uh, you've done a lot. You've really, uh, and, and I was listening to that interview we prefaced a while ago and I've really listened to it. And I'm going, wow, no one knows how much sweat and pain, the normal Joe Lunchbucket, Evelyn, everybody who listens to music and might've heard that first Dire Straits album has no freaking idea what led to that. But let's go back to the original question before we get to that. Uh, sometimes I, I just sound a musician. And then they say, what are you playing? And I say, I said, recently I say things like, well, they're probably all dead, the guys that I, I've worked with, you know. So I don't know if you'd know them, you know. And I, the, the one thing, I, ne I never say die straights. Because basically, not, not out of kind of modesty, self-modesty or anything. It's, it, for me, I've learned that everything changes yeah. once you do that. You, you, you're not the person, you're not the same person they're talking to. They were before you said that. And I don't want that. I've not looked for that. I don't want a red carpet. I don't want special rates that you'll pay more. I was playing with a guy called Dennis LeCourier, who is the voice of oh, Dr. Dr. Hook. Hook. Yeah, Dr. Hook. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's got a great voice. You know, he's a great voice. And it, I didn't play 724 with him, but I, I played, did about three or four tours. And uh, we were doing one tour in in the UK, because he's, he's only really big in the UK and Australia, as far as I know. And uh, we went to Australia, but um, there we were. And because he travels with another guy, who's Rod Smar, who's unfortunately died now. So you've got two Americans. So you've got an agent who's and a promoter, a manager's going, well, they've got to sleep somewhere every night and it's got to be paid for. So if we're not gigging, we're losing money. So we played in the second or third tour. We, we played in London, we had a day off, and then we were in Newcastle. That's like going from New York to Boston or something. So he tried to get us a gig in Albany somewhere on the Monday, you know, which is – and it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a regular gig. It was a, a social club. He paid for the hotel. It was, hard, it was on the way to Newcastle, so it paid for the gas and things, and we agreed to do it – not knowing what it was really. And we agreed that the, the most of the crew could have a night off and I'd set the drums up and I'd pack them away as long as I didn't have to hump them because I'd put my back out sometimes. I'd, I'd, I'll do that I'd, for the good of the tour, you know. So we played in this club. It was very smoky. It was before the smoking band kicked in and uh, I was packing the kit away. So it went really well, you know, as far as I know. You know. It's always the same. It's different. But it was a small venue, so... You tend, when you go into dressing room, the post-mortem tends to come up with the same verdict, that it was good, it was okay, it was great. You know, you don't get different interpretation. Small stage, you know, with very small monitoring systems. So 
I'm packing the kit away and the room's empty. And I can see from the corner of my eye a drunk. He's a drunk making his way down. He's trying to engage me in conversation. His speech is slurred. And I'm hoping he'll go away because um, the stage is quite high. So I've got this height advantage, you know. And I think, oh, he's not going to go. He's not, he is not going to go. And he makes it finally to the stage. And, you get, and he's, yeah. Yeah, I know what he's going to try and say. He's, he's, he's trying to say, I used to be in dire straits, but it's taken him, you know, half an hour to say it, you know, and I'm not going to help him say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. See, this is the funny bit. No, well, then. You were good. You were good. You were good. He's saying you were good then. But now, here's the word. Here's the, here's the thing, John. I didn't take offence at that. But also, it's the joy was out because it's all on that one syllable, then. Did he say you were good? You were good then. You're no bloody good now. Or you were good then. But you're still good. You know. And, and now, I, I, was, I thought it was the funniest thing I'd heard for ages because, because it didn't offend me. <laughs> you know, I didn't have that much of an ego to, you know, to kind of be affronted by. I just thought, you know, just thought a load of things like you never remember any of this tomorrow because <laughs> he's completely, you know, carbon washed. And we'll have more from Pick Weathers coming up in the next two days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. We'd appreciate that. And buy a t-shirt help support the channel. This is Rock History Music.